Hello, my freaky darlings, and welcome back to Witchwood. Today, I think we're going to try to do the snake. And if we have enough time, uh, perhaps the ox. I think I'll save the leech for their own thing. And on the bright side, I have got the audio working again. Alright, that was the forest, and I believe this is the fields. I need to go back to the apiary for a moment because I need sewing kits and I did not get those last time. I might as well get this while I'm here because I am going to need uh, a lot of grain. Uh, digestive tablets. What did that need? A sacrifice. Oh, that's how you defeat the drakes. Uh, oh, that's what I'm collecting snail shells for. And what is that? Oh, I have newt and goblin snot. I don't recall how you, uh, get past the goblins. We'll have to uh, learn that once we uh, once we go forth towards the snake. So apparently this isn't right. What do I need for the sewing kit? Oh, a skeeter snoot. So I have to go to the swamp anyway. I should try to find the fast travel thing while I'm there. Well, I need to be on this side of the forest anyway. Oh, that's just the farmer. I didn't recognize him from the back. Honestly, I am very relieved that the uh, music is working again. I had to um, add it in manually last game. And uh, I'm not the best editor in the world. I'm learning. I go to... no, that's a dryad. What a pretty tree. Do I have enough for unveiling powder? What is that for? Oh, useful against blood suckers and ghastly heads. But that's... Embalming salts. That's not something I have. Alright, I do have that, so... Got fairy dust from that. Okay, I do need the dreadful doll. Nothing this way. Nothing I can access yet, anyway. What did I need for this? Oh, I need a... Um...
Need a blue feather. And we gotta go capture some pixies. Well, not pixies, um, the fireflies. Luckily, fireflies aren't very far from here. Better to follow the path, but uh, I'm a little rebel. The more of these I capture, the less work I have to do later. And if I grab anything that sparkles, that'll make it easier on me later as well. Again, a lot of back and forth in this game. have to do the unveiling powder again later. But the snake was one of our goals, so we add the fireflies. Each of the fireflies alight upon the edge of the bowl, stepping delicately until they are evenly spread. And we add the feathers. Placed into the basin, the feathers arrange themselves into perfect triangular symmetry. The basin begins to glow a soft yellow as the fireflies rise from the muck within. They begin to dance up and down, drawing circles high above the bowl. Glitter rains down gently, shimmering as it catches rays of sunlight. Slowly the particles trace the form of a bridge leading from the edge of the water to the center of the lake. You tentatively test the strength of the spectral walkway and find that it is as strong as if it were made of solid stone. Isn't it pretty? I have to add bubbles, that way you don't look like you're pulling a Jesus moment. He's got a thousand yard stare! She doesn't seem to notice that you're there. I don't know how to say that word, the jugglery here? On display is unbelievably consistent, almost hypnotic. Distant strong man, a well muscled Hulk flexing with a faraway look in his eyes. A weary eyed bard, his bright clothes stand in stark contrast to the look of his tired apathy, or to his look of tired apathy. He seems to be in some kind of trance. The snake would like to meet you. Alright, well, first I'm going to rob him blind. Because I saw chests. I have to rate them. Ooh, the snake is good to us. Draped in glittering jewelry, the serpent stares intently into a crystal ball as you approach. Welcome, my dear. Welcome. I saw that you would come here. In search of answers. Pa! I just came here in search of a bard. That's him outside, right? With the loot. The minstrel. Yes. He is working off a debt to me. All those folk out there seem a touch adult. What did you do to them? They're all humble folk looking for something. Just as you are. I am here to provide them with my services in exchange for a bit of work. So what are you, some sort of carnival wizard? You're making quite the racket in my forest. A wizard, no, no, no. I am a seer, a scryer of the hidden mists, a foreteller of fortunes, and a keeper of Secrets. Fancy titles you've given yourself. Sounds like you're nothing but a used cart salesman peddling your wares to the gullible. Ah, a skeptic. 
Step closer and let the crystal ball reveal its mysteries. The snake's voice drops low and seems to fill the tent with a heavy weight. I am a helper of sorts, an unraveler of knots. I make the forgotten remembered. You feel the scaly touch of slithering coils wind around you, but you are powerless to move. And you, you have forgotten much. The snake's eyes swirl in a pattern you've never seen. Imperceptible colors collapse into themselves and fracture into kaleidoscopic mosaics across the canvas walls. A voice speaks from far away. It takes you a moment to realize that it's your own. I have forgotten so much. Let me help you find your answers. The serpent's coil slowly squeezed the consciousness out of you. And with a desperate push of willpower, you blink away from the snake's hypnotic gaze. Wait, get off me, you worm! You wriggle your body like a sack of loose twigs. Despite your protesting bones, you manage to squirm free and tumble backwards out of the tent. When your eyes open, you find yourself back outside the snake's tent. You pick yourself up from the ground and dust off your shoulders. <laughs> I guess that sly serpent has some tricks up his sleeve. I better come back with a plan for the next time I go in there. The festival patrons seem confused after your tussle with the snake, as if the spell over them was momentarily shaken. The crowds disperse as they fumble about in a haze. Now's my chance to get a word in with that bard. Maybe I can get him out of this mess. Strumming his lute, the strapping young man has a faraway look in his eyes. Is it wistfulness? Nostalgia? Or even hypnosis? Wander I may, but ne'er away from she I call my lover. To my chagrin I stumbled in and met the gaze of another. Curious I stared, I was not prepared, and this was my mistake. A binding gaze, now I live my days in service of the snake. Cry not for me, for there is she that might still see me saved. My spirits they lift as she holds a gift from before I was enslaved. A mirror but shattered, its pieces have scattered, if mended we may be set free. Down the wishing well spring to the swamp's moonlit ring, and hiding within the pixie's tree. What's all this about a broken mirror? You gave it to that weeping maiden? Speak plainly, you warbling fool. No matter what you do, the poor musician barely seems to realize that you're there. He just keeps strumming his lute and humming his mournful tune. Fah, maybe that lovesick miss will know what he's on about. Love how goofy the snake is with the banner. <laughs> Makes him seem far less threatening. Hello, I was told you have something for me. Oh, still my beating heart. Have you any news about my dear sweet love? I found him at the carnival, but he's been mesmerized by the snake. Unless I can break the spell, no one in that carnival can leave. The snake! Say it isn't so! I've heard how he grants wishes, but only for a terrible price. Why would my love be so desperate as to consort with that charlatan? I haven't a clue, but he's stuck deep. The only thing I managed to get out of him was something about a mirror? Do you know anything about that? A mirror? Oh, yes! It was the first gift he ever gave me. From inside her bodice, she produces a small, cracked hand mirror. But one night, it slipped from my balcony and shattered on the cobblestones. I tried to piece it back together, but I could never find the last three shards. Hmm, the song mentioned something about a wishing well, a moonlit swamp, and a pixie tree? Keep that mirror close. I'll seek out the missing shards and return them to you. Oh, thank you! I should very much love to see it whole once again. So, oh, Pixie Tree is right here. And I believe I'm going to need Unveiling Powder. Uh, 
Oh, maybe not. This gnarled tree is littered with countless trinkets and bits of trash glued haphazardly together to form a glittering hive. You reach for a sharp piece of broken glass that could be the mirror shard, but pull your hand away at the last moment. A thousand beady eyes peers out of the tree's knot holes. A familiar cr <laughs> cackling voice floats above the others. You again, Kettlehead? What you want now? I've come for that mirror shard. Hand it over and I won't have to strangle you again. No way! We need shinies to keep gross fairy folk away. Best fairy repellent there is. This seems counterintuitive. What? Since when are fairies afraid of shiny things? Well, I don't see no fairies around, do you? But maybe we can work something out. Them smelly mushroom herders have been encroaching on our turf, see? They've been building up those stupid little stone shrines of theirs, and worse yet, they've been hiring mercenaries to guard them. So we can't go anywhere near, but maybe a big stomper like you can take care of the problem for us. And then you'll give me that shard. Hey, if there ain't no fairies, we won't need no fairy repellent. Alright, so... That's one of them. And I need skeeters to make dreadful dolls. I should have enough for a soporific morsel, shouldn't I? Alright, I am going to put that there and put that there. Got dog hair, a fairy, and changeling root out of that, so that's pretty good. Ooh, I can get a second. Alright, so that's uh, one of them. I wonder if it'll still be knocked over when I get back. Uh, what did I need for the skeeters? Because I'm going to need... Smoke pellet. Oh, good. Uh, that's just clay, right? Yeah, that's clay. It says I can find some in the swamp, which means I just need... Diggable spots, that's the thing. Okay, and I'm gonna need some of you. Oh, embalming salt. Might as well catch the frogs while I'm here. While I'm here. embalming salt on the ground. I heard you. I swear there was another fly here. Oh, there you are. Oh! That thing nearly hit me. Suspicious stump. The thick moss growing on this massive fallen trunk seems to recoil at your touch, revealing a strange etching on the bark below. Slowly, a spark of swirling energy seeps forth from the waterlogged wood until an ethereal doorway opens before you. Oh, nice! Alright, 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 let's see, let's see. 
let's see. Uh, spirit salt. Uh, well, we might as well, uh, try it. Cool. I don't want to use that smoke pellet here because there's only one mosquito. And that seems like kind of a waste. We're just going to ignore the corpse in the middle. I'm gonna go so far as to say he's not important, but uh, he is not priority number one. of this up while I'm still here. Alright, that's gonna need shears. That should be enough. Grab you. Dreadful doll, I think, for the uh, goblin. Not that goblin. Yep, that one is still knocked down. And that frog can go and. the other cairns. Oh, I'm right back here. one over here and I should probably make my dreadful dolls early. dreadful doll. That should be enough for the moment. Alright. It has affected me too. But we got it. We got that stone cairn knocked over. Now I just have to find out where the last one is. Oh, it's right there. And that's a dryad. We take care of dryads was a cinder box. And I had just enough fireflies left over. Come back here. I love how all the collectible stuff kind of sparkles. So that way uh, you can figure out what you can pick up. I kicked over those little rock piles like you asked. Now give me that shard or I'll knock over this nest too. You smashed fairy shrines? Yeah, <laughs> good, good. Take it. We don't want your trash. We take it. 
All right, uh, so we got the pixie tree. He said the wishful well. Might as well get that while I'm here. So somewhere in here. to need a lot more clay for uh, things. Oh, I found a coin. Shiny stone. First to be left alone. Freshwater spring, and that's gonna need a key. You hike up the hem of your skirt from the ankle deep well water and duck down to inspect the small damp cave. A pale shape quickly retreats further into the dark space. You hear the labored breath of some pathetic thing frightened and alone. Hello there. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Bloodshot eyes blink nervously up at you. The creature gazes longingly at the light of the world above while simultaneously cowering from it. Poor dear, what are you doing down here in this hole? I bet you're hungry, aren't you? Two thin, malnourished arms twist out from the crevice. One hand tightly clutches a shard of glass while the other hand reaches out to you, begging for food. Okay, so I have to make roast beast. How did I get the recipe for that? Uh... I just need to make witch spice. I could do that. Hell yeah, let's go. This is why you collect everything. The creature snatches up the meat so quickly that you nearly lose a finger. It scurries back into its little crevice and you hear a satisfied munching from within. The mirror shard laid abandoned in the silt. So we take it. Why did I make a clay pot? Well, no matter why I made it, it can't hurt to uh, have a jar of water on hand. Alright, and he said one in the swamp. I know I haven't been hit yet, but you know, I just... I want to be prepared. Oh, hearth seeds. going to add that back up to our inventory and journal the snake find the shard in the swamp all right well before we do that we're gonna grab some cinders fast enough we can avoid the dog. Right, and there was a camp down below. We're gonna grab another sender. Ooh, another two senders. Fantastic. And some soot sprites. Let's go.
You can't have too many impi nuts. They're needed for a lot of things. This is where the swamp must be. There's a lot of snag vine out here. Well, hello there. Fat troll sits squarely in the middle of the bridge, busy scratching an itch on his back with a fallen tree. His unmatched girth blocks the path forward. Out of the way, you big galoot! He shifts his mass and releases a loud fart as you uh, attempt to circumvent him. Woof! Fine, keep your bridge. I'll come back when the vapors have dissipated. An impassable hulk, unless perhaps he likes you. I don't know how to make that happen. Okay, I'm just grabbing clay and shiny stones, and you can try to get me all you want. Eerie effigies and dancing totems. Alright, we're going to the sick house. Because we might as well do a little bit of what the uh, old lady asked us for. Hold on now. The sick house is full to the brim and festering with disease. Don't you know there's a deadly plague going around? A plague, you say? This is the first I've heard of it. Oh, it's terrible. It affects the young and the old, the healthy and infirm alike. We're so swamped with patients, I can barely catch my breath. So what are you doing out here? Shouldn't you be inside tending to the ill? We've just got so many bodies piling up. Someone has to bury them before they spread the sickness further. She drops her voice to a whisper, looking ashamed. It's gotten so crowded I've even had to dump some in the swamp. That seems unethical. But don't worry, the leech is inside, working her miracles on the other patients. They couldn't be in better hands. The leech? That's the doctor of this place? The best in the land. I don't dare think about how much worse it would be without her skills. I need to speak with her. I'm checking up on someone who came through here. Sorry, I cannot in good conscience allow a person of your, um, years to enter such an infectious space without proper inoculation. But with all the patients, we're low on medicine and I'm afraid I don't have any to spare. <sighs> What's a simple booster shot made from anyway? There's plenty of medicinal ingredients right here in the swamp. I'll go get them myself. Well, it's a pretty basic prescription. If you bring me the components, I'll be able to mix and administer it. Then you can go inside. I'll need 3 milligrams of bug acre extract, 5 grams of toxic thistle powder, and some lazy grass to numb the pain. Uh, okay, bug acre, I have that. You place a sloshing jar of acre in the nurse's hands. She inspects it suspiciously, but doesn't ask where it came from. Okay, uh, lazy grass, I had. The nurse takes the dried grasses you have been so careful to keep intact and immediately crushes them into powder. Alright, uh, so thistles. As far as I'm aware, you can't get the lazy grass in the swamp, though. You would have to go to the fields. Oh! There was already a thistle cut there. I guess I must have forgot it the last time I was here. Alright, where are... The thistles, because I know they are here. Avoid that blood sucker. Hex shroom, hex shroom, hex shroom. Now there's more thistles over this away. Should be 
about four. Ah, there we go. I was on the wrong tab for my ingredients the entire time. I'm sorry to take your fire, lady. Uh, so now that I have six thistles, I can just go straight to the sick house. There's a lot of weirdness in the swamp. Oh, I see where the shard is. I'll need three milligrams of bucket gore extract. Okay. You snap off a few spiny thistles and pass them to the nurse. She is careful not to prick herself on the sharp ends. The nurse nods at you, gathering all the ingredients to a small, hand-sized mortar. You hold your breath as she mashes everything into a slimy, stinky liquid. Not the most pleasant stuff, but I can assure you it beats growing lumps where no lumps should be. Uh, speak for yourself, one can never have enough lumps. The nurse shrugs at you, sucking up the bubbling mixture into an oversized syringe. She gestures for you to hold out your arm. And after stabbing into your flesh several times, she fails to find any veins with the point of the needle. Sorry, you seem to have some strange physiology? Bah, give it here, I'll do it. You seize the injector and jab it into your arm without further fuss. A cool sensation climbs into your fingertips. You doubt the medicine will have any effect, but at least it should make the nurse happy. There, I feel much better. Can I go inside now? Oh, yes, yes of course. You should be immune to the plague for the time being. Just be quick, the leech is very busy. All right, we'll get that in a minute. Uh, these animated wooden effigies seem engaged in a ritualistic dance. They march in stiff patterns around a reflective piece of glass embedded in the soft ground. You lean in for a better look just long enough to, dim it, uh, to make out the shard's mirrored surface reflecting the ghostly image of the moon. You think to reach in and grab it, but the swinging limbs of the dancing totems are too dense and quick. Out of the way, you overgrown twigs! Maybe I can get them to shift their attention to some other glittering bobble? Ooh, a moonlight globe. How do I make that? A uh, shiny stone. Totemic moon drop. And a glitter bomb. Okay. So glitter bomb is a jar, a sit sprite. I think I have enough for a jar. Oh, I've got plenty for a jar. Alright, and uh Totemic Moon Drop. on earth do I do that? I guess I'm gonna see the leech and see if it's part of the quest? Because I haven't seen any enemies that seem like they would drop it. The doctor slithers from one patient to another, checking off little boxes on a clipboard. From under her wide-brimmed hat, she appears to notice you enter, but pays you no mind. You must be the leech. I was hoping you could help me find one of your patients. Do you have the symptoms? Crackling of the bones, oozing eyes, skin rot, perhaps a yellow liver? Let's get you examined. The leech extends her toothy snout, prodding your body and searching for some hidden malignancy. You slap her away with a swift palm. If it's sickness you're looking for, you won't find it on me. My dear, we are all sick with something. Whether it's a broken heart or a broken arm, we all suffer one way or another. You peer through her tightly wrapped garments and see a deep darkness underneath. 
Despite the warmth in her words, there is a sense of hunger and urgency in her tone. I am here to heal the men, to put all your troubles at ease. Now tell me, what ails you? I told you already, I'm in perfect health. I'm here to find someone, a man who came here, uh, through here with a sprained ankle. Half the patients who come to me have a twisted this, or a broken that, before the pox sets in, that is. Can you be more specific? What does he look like? Oh, uh, I, mm, I'm not sure. Oh, then how do you expect me to help you? Come back to me when you know who you're looking for. You look about the sick house at the coughing, wheezing, bedridden souls. Perhaps some of them will be able to identify the missing husband? They're sleeping. It looks like they could use the rest. A husband? Yeah, he had a darker complexion than me. Okay. There was a fellow with dark hair, dark eyes. I miss that man with the beard. I don't know where that short fellow got to, eh? It's the beardy guy you're looking for? Can't find the short guy? Sorry, can't help you. Okay, so short, dark complexion, has a beard. Ooh, there's a chest. Taking that and that and that. Patient stares off into the distance, silent. Well, do you have any better idea who exactly you're looking for? Shorter. I'm going to need a bit more than that. Uh, dark in features. Narrowing it down. Give me something else. Or a full beard. Ah, yes. I remember that poor man now. He came in with a swollen ankle, but on his journey through the swamp, he must have contracted the plague. His condition declined rapidly, I'm sorry to say. In the end, there wasn't much I could do for him except make him comfortable. He's dead? What sort of sick house is this, anyway? My condolences, really. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to doing what I can for the living. At least tell me where his wife might collect his body. The nurse outside seemed to be having trouble keeping track of them all. I'm sorry, that information is reserved for next of kin. Judging by your physique, I wouldn't say you were related to the deceased in the slightest. The doctor turns away from you to prepare vials of medicine. Better return to the old woman in the swamp with the bad news. I finally got hit. Do you have news of my husband? He should have been back from the sick house by now. You bow your head in condolence. I'm sorry to say that your husband has passed away. The leech said he fell ill with the plague. Rather than grief, an expression of mild annoyance crosses the woman's face. Oh, what a nuisance. You don't seem that upset by the news. Well, he was getting on in years. It was bound to happen as soon or later. I just didn't think it would be from some measly plague of all things. So, where is the fool now? I'm not sure, but the leech wouldn't tell me. Her assistant mentioned having to dispose of the dead out in the swamp. Ah, brimstone and bandersnatch. I, uh, I know I'm already in your debt, sister, but can I ask you for another favor? I suppose I've already stuck my foot in this mess. What is it? 
There's an old circle of power just west of here. It served me well in my younger years, and I expect it's still got some juice left. I need you to dust it off and fire it up again. I'd go do it myself, but by the time I get there, my poor husband's body would already be reduced to worm farts. What am I to do with the circle? You're a knowledgeable lass. The engravings on the obelisk should explain the rest. Okay, so back to that circle of power. Let me grab that. And... Heal myself. Ooh, chest. A chest I didn't notice before. There was a free sewing kit there the entire time and I didn't know it. Oh. You live and learn. Alright, so this has... You brush off a blanket of thick moss and lichen from the ancient magical pattern carved into the earth. The essence of power wakes at your touch, bringing slight warmth to your fingertips. Four blackstone obelisks surround the ritual spot. You'll need to scrape off more overgrown decay to read the runic leather en engraved on their surfaces. Uh, apothecary humors and necromantic charm. The eastern obelisk yearns for the tooth of a dragon. You haven't seen any real dragons in years, but who knows what's out in the swamp. Okay. The southern obelisk asks for a collection of bodily fluids to breathe new life into an unliving vessel. Okay, that's what apothecary humors are for. Requires a source of undead animation. Okay, there's that. And proof of the dead. The afterlife is nothing if not bureaucratic. A death certificate from the leech would fit the bill. Okay, um... Last time I was here, it said something about... Okay, uh... That's buggy girl. Can I make a bait stick? I can indeed. The easy way to get buggy girl. was the thing. Uh, a snackerfice. A soporific morsel, magic paste. Do I have enough for magic paste? I do not. I need to go to the field. Well, while I'm there... Nab that. Alright, and I do need milk for the magic paste. Alright, I've got plenty of witch spice. Roast beast, said magic paste, and soporific potion. Perfect, so there's that. I'll get that in a bit. But for the moment, I need. Well, I'm here. I am here. Ah, sly old fox, how'd you manage to get your creaky bones past me grunts? Shh, my mooks must be getting fat around the waist to let you slip by so easy. Never too old to teach some young'uns that hands are better left out of people's pockets. 
Next time I catch one of your thugs rooting for gold, they'll have to recount their fingers. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Ain't afraid of nothing, are ya? Well, let me be the first to welcome you to our merry camp. I suspect you didn't just come to scold us. What do you know about the ox who works for the southern fields? He told me his family might have come through this way. Oh uh, yeah, we know all about the ox. We also might have seen that family of his. But on the other hand, maybe we didn't. What's it to you? Listen up, you big lug. That information is just about the only thing stopping me from changing the whole lot of you into stinking chickens. All right, Granny, no need to get upset. We was just playing games, you know? Yeah, we seen that family. A boy and his mum, if I remember. Always walking that big ox's shadow. Always looking afraid of him, too. So you didn't kidnap them? Where are they now? E you know, you remind, me my <laughs> you remind me of my dear old ma. She didn't take guff from no one, either. She used to make the most delicious meat pies. I sure do miss her cooking. Me and the boys have been awful hungry lately. Thieving is hard work, and crime doesn't always pay. Say, do you know how to bake? I even got ma's pie recipe right here. Who knows, on a full stomach, I might even remember something about that missing family. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to need, uh, two crow feet. Alright, had enough for that. Oh, I need a morsel. I need another... Oh, right. Wicker works. Might be handy if I made those in advance. There we go. And what did I need for this? Um, it's a good thing I collected so much. And I'm right near the cow, too. Now I just have to find where the chickens are. Chickens! There we go, there's the third one. Grab those while I can. Oh, that's uh, something I didn't notice before. What is that? A uh, pumpkin jack bone. Something I have to get from the fields. Just make that? No. No, apparently I did not. Alright, someone around here has to have a fucking fire. Uh, probably those bandits again. Sneak by. I guess they're just letting me in now. There we go. So, humble pie. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I want pie in my tummy, tum, tum. You dumbass. Come on, then. Have a helping. The bandit plunges his hand into the pie, grabbing a fistful. He barks in delight as wet chunks of pie uh, filling spatter out of his gob. Ah, delicious, just like how Ma used to make. Something's different. He picks a small black feather from between his yellow teeth. Is this crow? I figured you could do with a serving of humility. The gargantuan man's lip begins to quiver. <laughs> Great watery tears well up in his beady eyes. What's the matter, dearie? Are the spices too strong? No, it ain't the spices. It's just, it's just... He deteriorates into great shuddering sobs that shake the camp. 
Ma always said I was a bad seed. Said I weren't good for nothing but eating and thieving. All I really wanted to do was dance. It's always dance. I was gonna make the greatest dance troupe the world had ever seen. Had a name in mind and everything. Picking the leaping pockets. But, but, I ain't been doing nothing but taking. Always taking. Oh, Mom was right, I'm a bad apple. Come on now, dry those eyes. You're not all that bad. He snorts a dangling glob of snot back into his nose. <laughs> you really think so? You gently reassure him with another helping of pie. Of course not. You're going to tell me all about the Ox's family, aren't you? Oh, right. Well, <laughs> you see, we've been spying on that Ox for years now. Every full moon, he'd go out into his fields all by his lonesome. He'd howl at the sky. What was it he'd say? Oh yeah, he'd yell, Abraka corn cob. And then it always sounded like he got into an argument with someone. But there was never anyone else there except that creepy old scarecrow of his. You pat the sniffling rogue on his stubbly cheek. That's a good lad. Maybe it's time to think about trading the daggers for dance shoes. He stuffs more handfuls of the crumbling pie between his blubbering lips. <laughs> yes, and I'll do it. I'll dance. Alright. We only had to use the doll once. Isn't that handy? egg from you? No, I can't. You sound like a chicken, though. Alright, so we have to go talk to the scarecrow in the ox's fields. This eerie simulacrum of a human sways in the breeze. Its lumpy face seems to leer down at you as if expecting something. Ah, Abraka corn cob. The figure creaks against its pole as its vegetative head twists to look at you. It takes a weathing breath, expelling a moth from its mouth hole. Hello! Yes, have you come to strike a deal with a great and magnanimous harvest master? Ugh, no thank you. I'm involved in quite too many dark contracts with supernatural beings already. Why then have you summoned me? Has the ox made a deal with you perchance? The ox? Why yes, terrible trade I say, but a deal is a deal. What sort of trade? Does it have to do with his missing family? Yes, he said he wanted to win pretty prizes, grow the best crops, said he would give up anything in the world. So he offered me his wife and son, and I'm not one to refuse a bargain like that. Where are they, and what did you do with them? Don't worry, they're fine, but as long as I make the crops grow, they belong to me. And if the crops should fail, your deal would be broken. Ha! <laughs> I am the great harvest master. My harvest will never fail. We'll see about that. I better take a closer look at these prize-winning plants. A withering can. Hmm. These stalks don't look so sturdy to me. Good herbicide ought to shrivel these right up. That'll teach that ox a lesson about proper agricultural practices. I'll need a sturdy enough vessel to hold the poison, though. Maybe I can convince that vegetal fellow can give up that nice big watering can of his. Uh, the one... the, the very German gourd. Well, hello again. Find out anything about what that ox is up to? As a matter of fact, I have. It seems he traded his family to a turnip wizard or field genie or other some such nonsense. Ah, you must mean the harvest master. That explains a lot, actually. Bad business to get mixed up with that sort of fellow. The farmer nervously wipes his brow with the back of his leafy hand. Uh, not that I would know anything about that myself. Listen, I don't have time to exchange farm gossip. I need to borrow your watering can over there. Ah, I'd be happy to lend it to you, but unfortunately, I still need it to grow my prize winning vegetable. You glance down at the fat head of a cabbage bobbing gently against a blanket of big, swaddling leaves. 
You think you may have heard faint giggling coming from deep within the fronds? That seems plenty big enough to me. Ah, just you wait. My little baby is going to grow up to be a great big baby. It's going to be the belle of the ball at this year's festival. But if it were to, say, grow a little bit faster, I suppose I wouldn't need my watering can at all. You swear the farmer winks at you despite not being equipped with any eyes. Does nobody here grow produce in an honest way? Let me take a look at the little tyke. You look down at the fattest little cabbage you've ever seen, but if it gets your hands on that watering can, it could stand to be a little fatter. It's a growth potion, a turkey gizzard stone, and two jars of water. Alright, so for turkey gizzard stone, I need digestive tablets. What? A newt. And goblin snot. So goblins were against dreadful dolls. Uh, magic paste. I need... Okay, so I'm going to need more of those. I need to find newts. I'll just take those. Well, that's handy to have. That is very handy to have. So I was mistaken on how to get the um, the totemic moon drop. So we're going back to the swamp. I have to find a newt somewhere. Because I haven't found one yet. There you are. All right, shears to do some dentistry, okay. Hey, okay, that's all you'll get for now. Got it. A shovel for that muck. More shears for the thistle. Embalming salts. A lot of embalming salts. Of Erie somehow manages to make the swamp even less inviting. Okay, but where do I go for a newt? There you are. A bait stick. Okay. have plenty for that. Three is more than I need. Thank you. Okay, so we found out how to do the newt. Which just means that I need another one and goblin snot. Alright, let's get these thistles while I'm here. Alright, uh, rotting stump. 
Seems like a likely place. Go back to the fields. You know, honestly, this might just have to be a longer video because of how tangled up in everything, everything else is. Oh, right. I can't go back to the fields because I haven't gotten the goblin snot yet. Am I going the long way? I opened up a shortcut for a reason. I'm not smart. Like, there's a whole shortcut here, and I'm just not using it. Also, this is why you try new things in exploratory games. Right, there was a goblin up this way. As well as a dryad. Don't want to get too close to that dryad now. There you are. I don't have any more in my inventory, so I have to make one. I have just enough. I should go to where there's more goblins. Because I'm going to need at least two of them. Oh, well, I can just pick it up. Good to know. Okay, yeah, ow. But you know what? Worth it. Alright. Two should be enough. I needed more bug acre for that. Which means, um, bait stick! Good thing I'm still next to the swamp. Ooh, and I get a bait stick for free. That makes me very happy. Anything I don't have to make? It's very helpful. Come on. Okay, perfect. So... Unknown recipe. Well, I did need two of those. So, let's see. What do I need for this? Uh, right, blood means I need a smoke pellet. Alright, I don't need any more bait sticks right now. Enough for that. And the question is, uh, pumpkin jacks. Which, you know, we don't have to worry about that right now. Now the 
growth potion as the thing, and I need to go to the cow. Do I have a jar? I do not have a jar. Alright, on my way to the portal. The portal that'll put me right next to the cow. the top. And yet not really up towards the top. Turkeys! So I got the, uh, the gizzards. Right, the magic paste. I need to make that. two jars of water. Isn't there like a pump out here? Like you guys gotta be getting water from somewhere. I guess I can go back to the well for it. Dumb. Oh, I'm missing clay anyway, so I guess I'm going back to the well. Because that's an easy source of clay. When I say everything is tangled up in each other in this story, I absolutely mean it. Alright, got turkey gizzard stone. Only needed the one. making uh, progress even if I still don't know how to get the uh, totemic moonstone yet. Alright, growth potion. Turkey gizzard stone. Crushed into fine powder, a gizzard stone lends potent nutrients to the soil. I missed the first one and I'm sorry. Uh, two jars of water. You spritz the cabbage with fresh, clear water while uttering a simple horticultural charm. The water beats like dewdrops before the leaves drink them up and brighten in color. The budding plant changes from <laughs> to a bright purple, then blue, then yellow. It suddenly goes rigid and shrinks to the size of a marble. The farmer gasps in horror as his precious baby disappears back into the earth. He turns to you, shoulder stiff and pitchfork in hand. He takes one step in your direction, but stops abruptly when a tremor shakes the ground. You look to your feet and watch deep cracks split the earth. Hold on to your hat. This one's gonna be big. You hear a booming giggle echo from deep in the ground. The vegetal farmer falls to his knees, clutching his hat to his chest. In an explosion of leafy greens and flying earth, the bouncing head of an enormous cabbage erupts into the field. 
The farmer reaches out to it shakily. My, my little baby. Papa? The farmer scrambles towards the big bumbling cabbage with open arms. My beautiful baby, look how big you've grown. See, with a little love and help from your friends, you're sure to win first prize after all. Oh, I don't even care about the silly thing anymore. Just look how handsome my baby is. The two embrace, laughing and crying. I guess you won't be needing that watering can anymore. Please help yourself. You've helped me more than enough. It will take some work to break through the Scarecrow's magical boon, but you're confident in your mastery of poisons. Potion of Blight, Weird Water, and a Pumpkin Jack Bone. Alright, there's a Changeling. Where exactly am I supposed to find a Pumpkin Jack? Yeah, I haven't been over here yet. That's a lot of sunflowers. A lot of sunflowers. Ah, pumpkins. Snag vine. I should have plenty of that. Oh, only one sewing kit? Damn. Might as well use it while I got it. Alright. Pumpkin Jack Bone, let's go. Uh, how many of them do I need? Make that while I'm here. Weird water. Well, I've got enough for that at least. Uh, Potion of Blight. I just need a thistle. Fantastic. I swear to god there was something else. Or there was something else that I needed for the thing. A thing, anyway. Alright, a lot of clay. Still seems kind of silly that there's like no pump out here. Somebody has to have a pump, right? But I still need a jar of water, and then I need the thistle. There's something else I'm sure I need. I have forgotten what it is already. And I still need clay. Uh, before we do that, we're going to gather some cinders. I will have mercy on the dust sprites for today. That's not the right way. I need to go the other way. Grab those. You can never have enough. Now I just need clay. And with clay, I need water. Oh, look, another coin. I'm pretty sure I need two. Still 
still says the leech is my, um, my current, so I should change that quest real quick. That's not right. Journal. We're doing the ox right now. Oh, I just needed a pumpkin jackbone and a potion of blight and weird water. Did I already make a potion? No. Now I have to go to the swamp. go to the swamp, get a thistle, and then I can do everything for the ox. Okay, right, swamp first. Swamp first. You can't catch me. this while I'm here. Any more thistles? I think I've got enough. That should be plenty. Okay, inventory. Alright, I didn't make that yet. That was the other thing I had to do. Perfect. I am going south. I need to go a little bit north. Alright. Potion of Blight. You hold your breath and empty the poisonous vial into the container. The toxic fumes make your fingernails curl. Oof. A good amount of weird water will dilute the poison to keep it from eating straight through the metal can. You crush up the impish bone into fine powder. This potent fertilizer will help spread the blight. You find a hefty stick to mix all the ingredients inside the watering can. You know your work is done when the stick dissolves into mush in your hands. Withering can it is. I still did not change my quest like I was supposed to. But. Should be fine. Hey, I thought I told you to beat it. He raises his hoe and brandishes at you menacingly. Song. As I stay out of his way, I can wither his entire crops. You watch the sickness spreading up the stalks to the very tips of the tallest leaves. Vivid greens turn to diseased browns as the crops bend and droop. No! What is happening? Harvest Master, we had a deal! You promised my crops would never fail! Dreadfully sorry! Looks like my magic is broken! Not my fault! The ox throws himself to the ground, desperately raking the soil with his fingers. Wait! Let's make a new deal! Please! I sacrificed too much for this! A new deal? What is your offer? Anything you want, just bring my precious crops back to me! Anything, hmm? This is acceptable. Worm-like roots suddenly wrap around the ox's feet and begin dragging him to the soil. Wait, I didn't mean- The dust settles over the spot where the ox once stood as if nothing had happened. Though the soil looks barren and diseased, a small sprout of leafy green catches your eye. Where the ox once stood, a green tendril has pushed its way through the earth. You watch a delicate blossom unfurl, revealing a stubborn, hard-shelled seed. The soul of the ox. Quest completed. The scarecrow again stands motionless. Standing at the front gate, the ox's missing wife's son blink in confusion as if they had just birthed 
<laughs> burst forth from the earth itself. Oh, what happened? Ah, uh, welcome back. I suppose you don't remember much. He really did it, didn't he? That stupid festival prize was worth more to him than us. Where is he? Where is my husband? Don't fret, I've already set things straight. He won't be troubling you again. And you've got this nice fertile farm all to yourself now. My son and I worked ourselves to the bone for that horrible man. Thank you for lifting this curse. Just do me a favor and don't make any deals with suspicious scarecrows. All right. All right. These guys are just friendly now. They're puppy dogs. Take that. And ooh, cinders. I could always use more cinders. I still think it's supremely silly that nobody in this farmland has a water pump. So now I have to go back to the swamp. Oh, I missed the portal. This is where the portal is. <laughs> this is where the portal is. And... Totemic moon drop. How does one get a totemic moon drop? So I have. I have most of the things that I need. I just need a death certificate. Drake Fang! You drop the sharp reptilian fang into the stone basin with a heavy clunk. It spins like a top, emitting a high-pitched whine before shattering into fine white dust. Apothecary Humors! You fill the bowl with an offering of anatomic liquids. The fluid slowly disappears as if being drained by some unseen thirst until only the wet residue remains. The western obelisk requires a source of undead animation. You place the token of undeath into the basin. It flutters like a candle for a moment before the shadowy umbra of the obelisk snuffs it out. Oh, I am stuck on something. And if there's one place you don't want to be stuck, it's in the swamp. Because literally everything here is trying to kill you. remember to cover your mouth when you cough. A shadowy doctor prowls amongst the cots, eyeing the weakest patients with a dark hunter. hunger. She snaps a quivering tentacle at you as you approach. Not to step closer! Who knows what disgusting maladies you might be carrying? Yes, yes, I'm a pox-ridden wretch, I know, but I need a death certificate from you. Specifically, one of the short-bearded men we spoke about. His wife is in no condition to roll her chair through the swamp, so she's asked me to collect it for her. I don't simply give out death certificates to anyone claiming to be someone's aunt, grandmother, or friend. This is a legitimate operation. As she turns her back to you and rummages through a nearby medicinal closet. Now where has that serum got to? Don't tell me we're already out. What's the matter? Out of stock? It's a shame you don't have the time to go out yourself. She tenses at your continued presence. What are you getting at? Medicine for that death certificate. I think that's a fair trade, don't you? You would barter when, people li <laughs> when people's lives are on the line? Fine. You'll have your paperwork, you filthy degenerate. Clearly too angry to speak with you, she shoves a list of required medicinal supplies into your hands. Uh, dragonfly wing, mending poultice, and skeeter snoot. We could do that. Right now.
All right, make plenty of those. Now the only thing I need is smoke pellets. Uh, we're gonna have to travel all the way back to the beginning of the swamp because that's the best way to get more than one mosquito at a time. There's only one right there, and we need at least two. I'm sure I'm going to need another dreadful doll, but... Alright, let's get you all mad at me and follow me. Three, two... Yeah, that was a bit late. Oh, and I missed the one. Oh well, I still got two of them. I still got two. Which is exactly how many I needed. But it's still kind of annoying. I got hit trying to get three, and I didn't even get three. Sad day. And the only thing I'm missing is that totemic moon drop. Poultice. The leech stuffs the poultice into an unsanitary looking cabinet without a second glance. Dragonfly wings. The leech takes the wings with a surprisingly delicate touch and lays them out carefully along the surface of a clear shelf. The leech inspects the barbs before placing each of them carefully into a velvet lined container alongside other excruciating looking instruments. I've run your errands, now I really must insist on that death certificate. There's no need to get prickly, I have your papers right here. The leech extends her moist arm and thrusts a poorly written note in your hands. You shake the mucus from the paper and try to decipher the loopy, illegible scribbles. All doctors, they, you can't read their handwriting. You're not even sure that the leech spelled the poor man's name right, but you suppose it's better than nothing. Fah, next time I need a doctor's note, I'm better off forging the signature myself. Take it. So we did the ox on the way to the snake and the leech. Okay, that's not what I intended to do, but you know what, Hagstrom? The humid swamp air has made the paper of the death certificate soft and damp. As you drop it into the bowl, it decomposes before your eyes until nothing is left. With the final offering accepted, the obelisks surrounding the circle begin to hum. You can hear a strange melody playing through the discordant tones. The carving on the ground burn or the carvings on the ground burn with renewed energy, driving away the overgrowth. You are quick to step away as you feel a vacuous force pull at the circle center. I suppose that's done the trick. Let's see what the writing has to say for itself now. You rotate your head to read the glowing letters on the edge of the circle. Hmm. Place the vessel of the deceased, yada yada, recite the evocation of necrodermis, blah blah, apply the canopic ointment. Right, seems straightforward enough, all I need to do now is go fetch the body of that poor fool husband. He should be here in the swamp somewhere. Search the swamp for the husband's body. Ugh, this must be where that nurse has been dumping the surplus of corpses. I'll need to take a closer look at each one to find the right fellow. Still dead, though. So 
similar, perhaps, but not the right body. This isn't the right one either. Not the husband. This one. Poor soul doesn't fit the description. Not this one. It says that there's six. Uh, it must be over where that drake is, I think. Where on earth is that stinking body? You'd think I'd be able to find him among the dead here. You watch a particularly bloated fly land on a rotting hand poking out of the monk. Its disgusting proboscis probes at the withered flesh. Two globular eyes, red eyes, slowly unglue themselves and swivel to boggle at the insect. A huge slime-covered tongue lashes out and pulls the hapless fly into a gaping toothless maw, along with most of the sunken corpse. Well, I suppose that explains where my misplaced man went. Can it be? That's a young wheel. <laughs> I can't fucking read. Can it be? Has a lovely young morsel wandered its way to my pl uh, palace? You call this filthy bog a palace? He throws his head back, shaking the swamp with burbling laughter. Smaller frogs and newts scurry out of the way to avoid being crushed by his enormous bulk. Uh, wouldn't you? This place is a veritable bounty of insects, and my subjects have such healthy appetites so they will all grow big and strong. I'd eat you too, but that head of yours looks much too hard. I prefer my food to be nice and tender. Uh, look, you wouldn't perchance have seen an old man pass through here, have you? About yay high, full beard, dead-ish. The frog taps his fingers against a log, grinning an impossibly large grin. Oh yes, I do believe I've seen the chap. He had such a delectable aroma and fall off the bone ribs. But I'm sorry to say that once something goes down the hatch, it never sees the light of day again. We'll see about that. I'm sure I can come up with some just desserts for you. The frog rolls his eyes around and around as if daring you to try something. The witch, of course, always has something she can try. Digestive tablets, so I need... I need... Don't I have a bait stick? I do. I do indeed have a bait stick. Alright. Smack you first. Okay. That's clay. I got stuck. I got a little stuck. Alright, digestive tablets. You wrap a juicy looking grub around the medicinal tablets and offer it up to the Frog King. Your Majesty, I really must find the whereabouts of that gentleman. Perhaps a small tribute will persuade you to loosen your tongue. The frog gulps down the tantalizing meal without a thought. Ah, delectable gift. Thank you, my pretty. Now I already told you where. His nostrils flare for a moment, then he sneezes, sending specks of wet mucus flying. The frog's throat suddenly expands, filling with gas. The belch that erupts from its lips resonates so loudly that the entire swamp ceases its buzzing. You avert your eyes, but the noise and smell of the frog's explosive eruption almost knock you off of your feet. Great Glinda's ghost, what a stench! The frog wobbles on his legs, looking thoroughly emptied. He teeters before rolling his huge body back into the swamp with a thunderous splash. You spot the slippery body of the husband floating in the bog water. Luckily, he seems to be missing some bits and pieces, so he should fold up quite nicely. <laughs> Stuff him in my satchel. We 
place the husband's body in the center. With considerable effort, you unfold the husband's decaying body from your satchel and slap it down into the middle of the circle. Invisible shackles wrap around the corpse's limb and pull its spread eagle against the ground. Strange mists rise from the obelisk, casting everything in a sickening green light. Slowly but surely, the corpse begins to levitate off the ground. It rotates to face each obelisk one by one. Oh, get on with it. I haven't got all day. You give the rotting head a good kick as it passes by you. With a gasp of stale air, the body drops to the ground. Suddenly, it bolts upright. <laughs> Well, hello there! You caused me a lot of trouble, you know that? The reanimated corpse claws at his throat. Oh, sorry. Wait a moment. Near your feet, you see a disembodied tongue flopping about on the ground like a worm. You scoop it up and quickly toss it into the man's gaping mouth. Though he moves his jaw, his lurching voice seems to emanate from someplace beyond. MURDERER! What? I am not. You were quite dead when I found you. No. Leech murdered me. He clutches at his hollow chest as if trying to feel his heart beating. Gave me plague. Drained my blood. Leech murdered others. He swings a limp arm towards the body-filled bog. I knew there was some awful stink about that sick house. What sort of doctor infects her own patients? Check her office. Find proof. Don't you worry. I'll make sure that parasite gets what's coming to her. But you should back, uh, you should head back home. Your wife is worried half to death about you. He turns and looks longingly over his shoulder. You can hear his vertebrae popping. Yes, I late. As he shambles into the choking mist, he gives you a crooked nod of thanks. So into the office we go. I keep getting stuck on things. I might have to look up how to get a totemic moon drop because I have no idea. While the leech is busy with her patience, you rifle through the contents of the various cabinets in her office. Mostly dried herbs and potions, nothing seems out of the ordinary. That is, until you notice a suspicious-looking bookcase set against the wall. The books are all fake, just chopped down spines glued to a solid plank. Your fingers race across the medical titles and quickly find a loose volume. With a click of a switch, the whole bookcase swings open to reveal a secret compartment. Your heart jumps at the sight. Racks upon racks of bottled blood are arranged like fine wines, each vessel meticulously catalogs the name, description, and age of its source. Looks like that thirsty slug's been sapping the living for years! On a nearby table, you spy a decanter half-filled with ruby-red liquid. You wonder whose blood it contains. A uh, dash of salt would remind that slimy worm that there's worse things out there than bloodsuckers. Just waiting to be salted. Which means, uh, embalming salts? Or, no, spirit salts, that's it. Spritz! You sprinkle a generous amount of embalming salts collected from the graves of the leech's victims into the decanter. As the salt dissolves into the bloody cocktail, you hear the telltale squelching of the good doctor's approach. What are you doing? Can't you see this is my private office? I already helped you enough, so there's no reason you ought to be here. She hastily shuffles you out of the room. Now get out! This place is only for the sick! You're certainly right about that. You walk just out of sight before doubling back to hide behind a withered get-well bouquet. You peer at the vex leech as she slithers around her office, checking every cabinet and locker for tampering. She mutters something expletive about nosy old women. Satisfied, she sighs with relief and reaches to pour herself a glass from the tainted decanter. Ah, that addition of black fever adds a certain nutty quality. Maybe it will pair well with an infusion of peat moss palsy in the next batch. She takes a sip, waiting just a moment before throwing her head back and guzzling it all down. Mm. 
lovely, sharp flavor. Full body, too. And suddenly, the leech snaps to attention. Her limbs dart out, writhing with uncontrollable gestures. She stabilizes herself against the table as sweat pools on her brow. The decanter shatters against the floor in an explosion of glass. Whoa, what's happening? The leech spasms as the tendrils of ghostly spirits begin to suck the moisture out of her body. You watch as she dwindles in size, shrinking like some horrible raisin. You inspect the mummified worm, pressing it between your fingers lightly. Drained by the very spirit she was supposed to be healing. In your fingertips, you make out the faintest of heartbeats. The soul of the leech. A dried worm. Okay. Uh, I don't believe it. This was happening right under my nose. Alright, now we just have to do... The snake. Which means I have to figure out it says totemic moon drop can be found in the swamp but how and where how and where indeed yeah I'm gonna have to look this up because I haven't found anything that looks remotely like that It'll probably be obvious once I look it up. Because I just do not remember. I have everything else. Explain some things. Snag vine. It's one thing I haven't tried yet. Of course, it would be the one thing I haven't tried yet. Bye. Inventory. Nope. Where'd you go? Didn't I literally just make you? Oh, I'm in the ingredients tab, aren't I? Maybe I can get them to shift their attention with a glittering bobble. You cast the glowing globe into the ritual circle and watch as the wooden effigy suddenly lose coordination and knock their wooden limbs into each other. You take the opportunity to slip between their tall frames and snatch the mirror shard before their frenzied dance begins anew. Take it. Now I can get out of here. But first, let's say goodbye to my... My sister in witchcraft. My sister in deals with the devil. And her husband. Thank you, sister. He's good as new. Love, wife. The fact that he loves her so much is a good uh, indication of why she would want him reanimated. Alright, back to the forest.
right back to the maiden who has the mirror so we can give her the shards. Have you found any of the mirror shards? I wonder where they could be. You gingerly hand over the broken glass shards to the maiden. She's careful not to cut herself on the razor sharp edges as she slots them into the mirror frame. The pieces click into place perfectly, and the surface of the mirror ripples like the water on a lake. The ripples calm, settling into the form of a pristine crystal mirror. She gazes into the mirror with awe. Look, it's as good as new! Oh. The maiden's reflection ripples and morphs into the visage of a handsome young man. My love, is that you? Overcome with joy, a fresh stream of tears roll down her cheeks. Oh, I can't believe my eyes! I don't understand! What happened? Where are you? I'm imprisoned inside my own head. It's horrible here. You have to get me out. You went to the snake, didn't you? Why would you do something so stupid? Uh, listen, my love. I have a confession to make. I'm not actually that good of a musician. What are you talking about? You were so beautiful upon your balcony. A bum like me would never get your attention. So I, uh, asked the snake to help me a little. I thought I could protect myself from the snake's hypnotic gaze with this magic mirror. But then you went and broke the darn thing. I didn't break it, it slipped out of my hand! Wait, don't put this on me! How could you be so irresponsible? One problem at a time, children. We fixed the mirror so it should be able to break the snake's spell now. Yes! Oh, you have no idea how unbearable it is being stuck in here. There's nothing but awful poetry and song lyrics that don't even rhyme. Please, Granny. Take the mirror. I can hardly stand to look at this buffoon any longer. Babe, wait! <laughs> Take the mirror. <laughs> this is why you get to know somebody before you agree to run away with them. Hello, snake. Reflect. Sudden dread grips the snake as you swing the shimmering mirror to meet his eyes. The mind-altering patterns of his gaze are reflected back to him. Slowly, but steadily, the snake leans closer and closer to the surface of the mirror. His forked tongue flicks against the glass, then disappears beyond it. It's so beautiful. Like a length of rope being pulled through an eyelet, the snake rushes forward and vanishes into his own reflection. The mirror jolts and bucks out of your hand, clattering to the ground. You stoop down, careful not to look too deeply. Hidden in the reflection of the mirror's surface, you can faintly make out a tiny, wriggling shape trapped just beyond the veil of this world. The soul of the snake. The souls of the bear, leech, snake, and ox jostle in your satchel with fearful energies. That's that, then. I better get these back home to the goat before he ransacks the rest of the place. Quest completed. And it's empty here now. We did our job. going to be a much longer video than I anticipate. <laughs> Looks like the two of them are working things out, which is good. We love a happy ending. So now we have to go back into the decay and back home. Said to meet the goat in the shrine with the maiden. Here we are. The goat rears its head at the sight of you. Its hooves pound the ground excitedly. 
Most excellent. I can sense the presence of spirits about you. You must have the captured souls I asked for. No small task, I can tell you that. So what do you plan on doing with them? Oh, this and that. Nothing you must concern yourself with. What's important is that you are one step closer to fulfilling your contract with me. Just go ahead and place them in the shrine there. I'll take care of the rest. The goat shakes its head towards a carved relief at the back of the room, grinning in a horrible way that no goat should. You approach the shrine and open your satchel. We sacrifice the stuffed bear. As you bring the stuffed bear close to the carved stone relief in the wall, it spontaneously bursts into flame in your hands, burning away until only a harsh red stone remains. The stone zips out of your grasp and straight into a socket on the wall, buzzing like some angry insect. You are buffeted by flashes of the bear's wrath, drunken roaring, cowering body, splintered wood, the smell of honey. The shrine awaits another offering, the dried worm. As with the first, the mummified husk of the leech, a leech turns to ash as you bring it close to the wall, leaving only a glowing orb in its place. Images of the leech slither into your mind, the prick of a needle, the drip, drip, drip of draining fluids, soothing words, restless sleep. And now we offer the cracked mirror. Prismatic colors flash through your head at the thought of the snake. Secrets lapped up by a forked tongue whispers beneath the sound of festivities. And the hardened seed. The ox brings with him the overbearing heat of the midday sun. The salty tang of sweat in the soil. Suffering. Sacrifice. Solitude. You step away from the shrine and its smoldering stones. Your burdens suddenly feel much lighter. Beside you, the sleeping maiden stirs in her slumber but does not wake. Now then, you've had a very long day. Why don't you get some rest? Tomorrow we shall pick up bright and early. Yes, I am quite tired. And that is going to do it for this episode of Witchwood. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do uh, all four of the next ones because I think there's 12. I'm pretty sure there's 12. Uh, so next video I should be doing the next... Uh, I should be able to get it through at least two. If I try to do all four it might end up as another two hour video. <laughs> um... But thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. All the things that help small creators out. And I am very happy that you are joining me with the journey through, or on this journey through this beautiful, beautiful fairy tale. Words are hard. Words are very, very hard. But anyway, I will see you all in the next one. Bye!